So drop shadows can tend to look a little cheesy, but in this tutorial, we're gonna see how to make drop shadows like a boss or at least a middle manager. So first let's create some text. I'm gonna click on the artistic text tool and I'm gonna click and drag so I could see the size of the letter. We want some nice large letters. So I'll click on the tool here. That way we can come in and change our font something better let's hit the center text button and then let's go to our alignment and center it on the page what i'm going to do is give this a color just to get it to stand out a little bit i'm also going to rename this text only and really that's supposed to be text only i'm going to control c control v and this one i'm going to call shadow only i've got this magnet turned on that's going to help later but what i want to do is move this one down move this one up i'll snap them back together later but this is going to help things become more clear and i also want a background so i'm going to click on the rectangle tool click and drag over everything let's give this a similar color but first let's put it at the bottom of the stack give it an orange make it a little bit darker now i'm going to go back to this tool here I'm gonna lock my background layer. I could name this, but rectangle should be fine. So I want this to have an effect on it. So I'm gonna to go to quick effects. I'm gonna click on outer shadow. And just so I could see it, I'm gonna change the offset a little bit here. Let's make it go straight down. Now this is good, but I wanna make the fill opacity zero. So this is kind of interesting here. If I click and drag this down, we can't see the text anymore. We can still see the shadow, but the text is still knocking out parts of the shadow. So what I wanna do is hit the little cog here under outer shadow and fill knocks out shadow, uncheck that. So now we only see the shadow. We're in good shape here. Let's click and drag this. And with the snapping, it should line up right on top. Now let's grab both of them, drag them down a little bit here. What I wanna do is go back to my layers. I'm going to lock text only. So now we only have access to the shadow layer. Clicking on FX again, this little icon here. I'm gonna go into offset, increase that a little bit. To get a good shadow, it's nice to have a dark shadow very close to the text. And then as the shadow moves away from it, kind of have it softening and getting faded out. We start by having a close shadow here, taking the blur, which is controlled by the radius and bringing this up a little bit. And I put the opacity up fairly high maybe not a hundred percent some around 60 should work now we've got that we can also have a little fun here with colors so we're dealing with orange we could try to add some blue into the shadow it's not showing up because we got this set to multiply we could set this to normal and then we could see things a little bit more clearly now it's just way too blue so let's bring this down something dark like that what i'm going to do now is hit this plus sign note that we've got two shadows here just to keep myself organized i'm going to click on the bottom shadow and make adjustments to that this one i'm going to give it more offset i'm going to bring the radius up a good amount here and i'm going to lower the opacity all right something like that and if i want to i could shift the colors around a little bit and have some fun with that and I'll just do something like this. I don't want to go so far where I can see a huge difference, but just taking this a little subtly so it still feels like it's cohesive with the other shadow. Now, this is good. We could go one more. Click this here. Click on the bottom one. Now, we're getting close to being maxed out on our offset. If I just mouse over here and scroll wheel up, I'll increase by one pixel. But if I hold on shift, I'll go 10 pixels at a time. And the same thing, we're maxed out on radius. Just mouse over here, hold on shift, scroll this up. So this one, I wanna be very subtle. So I'm gonna take this really high and also just kind of a hint if it's too opaque, it's just gonna be a blob. So just give a real subtle look. You might need to come back in here if there is not a nice blend between the first one and the second one. You might need to take this radius a little bit higher. I don't wanna to go too high, but I just wanna bring it high enough where obviously at nothing, we can see a very clear shape at about, and this is gonna vary for everybody, at about this point in time, this drop shadow feels like it's blending nicely into this one. And of course, opacity is a factor. Just go through, adjust these until everything looks exactly how you want it to. And one thing is I shifted the colors between these two, so it might not be a bad idea to take this last one and just shift it a little bit, make things look a little bit more interesting. All right, so we're done. We can close this window. So we've got a shadow, but what's a good shadow without a light? Let's add a light here. I'm going to lock everything now and deselect that. 
I'm gonna click on the ellipse tool, click and drag a circle out here. All right, let's give this a yellow color. Don't need a stroke, let's get rid of that. Let's go to quick effects and add a blur. Bring this up fairly high. I'm gonna hold on shift, scroll wheel up here. All right, so I want this to be covering the majority of the text and a good amount of the background, but still have a nice fall off here. So I might need to just place this a little bit better. All right, so it's kind of just hitting the edges of the text. Let's go back to layers. Let's add a blend mode here. You got a few different options. In this instance, linear light looks pretty good, but try out a few different ones because you can get some good results. Now we could also try to adjust the color of our light. Let's make sure we click on the fill area here and see, obviously you don't want to go in that direction don't want to go too far in that direction we're pretty good as we were if you want the desaturated look you can go in that direction or if you want it to be a little bit darker you can go into that direction so feel free to make your adjustments there so i think we're in good shape now let's make the shadow look a little bit more interesting so i'm going to lock the light unlock the shadow layer making sure i clicked on the shadow layer. One of the best new features of Affinity Designer 2 is this warp here. So I'm gonna click the warp group. I'm gonna select quad. Now, if I click this point and I hold down shift and I click this point, I can take them and drag down. Now I can't hold down shift to constrain this. So you just gotta be careful. I've dragged this pretty far down. That might be too far, but I wanna get some handles in here. Click right in the middle and drag this up, something like that. Parts of the P are a little bit too stretched. Take this and bring it up but note that i'm bringing the shadow above up a little bit so i might want to then take this one and bring it down to compensate and i'll do the same thing on this one here i take the handle just kind of drag this straight up get things a little bit more subtle and take this drag it down a little bit to compensate i think i went a little too far in the middle i'm going to drag this down just so i could see a little bit more of the light here you're gonna have to fiddle around with this for a little while just be subtle that's one of the keys and i can also take this handle maybe bring that down so i see a little bit more shadow over here i see kind of a little bit in the middle letters and i'll have to make an adjustment maybe here a little bit so this is what we got and you could try different warps out here this one i chose was just because it was really simple if you want to change your warp after the fact you can come in here and grab it just want to make sure you're not selecting the shadow layer by accident I want to select the warp group and if i click shadow only and then i click on the warp group here you'll see we don't see that warp shape but if i click over the actual icon if you get into that situation that's how you can get to that all right and then i could come in and i could say you know what maybe this is a little too far down here let's fix that up a little bit here also remember that we can click on this fx icon if you want to make adjustments here say maybe this one you want it to have a little darker look to it we still have that option and these are all adjustable after the fact because as you make changes to the lighting and color, things might look a little different. We could even, you know, adjust the offset if we wanted to on any of these, or if we wanted to come in, maybe a different color would work better. And you have a lot of flexibility that way with your different drop shadows. And remember, our text is still live. Let's hide the actual letters. Let's go under shadow only, click that. I'll double click in here. If you want to put something new, we'll select our text layer. Well, first unlock it, make it visible. And we got a lot of a nice flexibility and we've got a, a nice drop shadow with an interesting look to it. And as I was saying before, you might need to change your warp group because things now look a little different. Let's click on the actual icon so I make sure it's selected. It's a real easy fix just to take these and make some quick adjustments. So yeah, a really nice effect. It's great that it has flexibility to it. And if you're really just not getting the look that you want under the node tool, you can see the cursor has a little plus sign next to it when we have the warp group selected. If I double click in the middle here, I get an extra controller for shadows and can move the anchor points or the handles around to get just the look that you want.